I actually don't recommend getting into a debate with someone who believes that the earth is flat because there is a mountain of evidence, a whole planet of evidence, uh, that the earth is curved and dating back for millennia. And someone who's approaching this question and coming at it from the premise that uh, scientists are lying, there's a massive conspiracy across organizations and governments and individuals across the world for decades um, that don't acknowledge some of the mathematics going behind it. They're just coming at it from a different perspective. And so actually engaging in debate isn't going to be fruitful. But it's worth the opportunity to take a little pause and reflect on why do we think that the earth is curved? I mean, you could just take my word for it. I'll just say, hey, guys, the earth is curved and you'll walk away without really understanding why and why we believe something. And so it's important for you and for me and for everyone to go back to basics to, to talk about the evidence, talk about the history, talk about the measurements, because it's important for us, not necessarily to win an argument, but just, you know, we should be able to say why we think the earth is curved. And so the first piece of evidence that we have is, that the earth is curved is the nature of the horizon. When you look at something far away, it gets smaller, okay? Okay. If you're looking at something very far away, say over the water, where you have a very long horizon and it's relatively flat and calm, as something recedes in the distance, like a boat receding in the distance, as it gets further away, it does get smaller, exactly what you expect, but then it also starts to disappear and it disappears from the bottom up to the top. This implies that it's going over something that you can't see through. And the same applies to like mountains. If I'm looking at a distant coastline, I may not be able to see the coast, but I can see mountains behind it because they're higher and I can peek over some curved edge in order to see the, cur the mountains. And then as I get closer, I see more and more of the mountains and I see the coastline itself. This does get a little bit tricky in practice to measure because the atmosphere and layers of the atmosphere can play all sorts of optical tricks. So it's not reliable 100% of the time. But when you do a careful, controlled measurement of what you see in the limit of what you can see and what you sh would be able to see if the earth were flat, it always comes out curved. Another piece of evidence that we have that the earth is curved is during a lunar eclipse when the earth is between the sun and the moon and the earth is casting its shadow on the moon, that shadow is always in the shape of a circle. It doesn't matter when, it doesn't matter the time of year. What we always, always, always see is a shadow in the shape of a circle. The only way to get a shadow in the shape of a circle is if the earth is a sphere or roughly a sphere. If the earth were flat, if it were a disk, then different alignments would produce different shadows. You might get shadows like this if we're edge on or like weirdly shaped, but we always, 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 always see a circular shadow. That means the earth has to be round. A third thing that we noticed and we began to notice millennia ago is the visibility of stars. And this comes about in two ways. One is that you can be at, say, sea level and you see, a, you know, you see, you look around at night, you can see stars above you, you can see stars all the way down to the horizon. Then if you were to climb a very, very tall mountain, and you would still have the stars above you. You would still have the stars to the side and plus some more further down, closer to the horizon that you can't see from sea level. This was actually first measured around 800 AD by one of the Arab caliphs and a mission, uh, Abbasid caliph, uh, caliph, if I remember right, sent a mission to measure exactly this. Like they, they sent observers to the top of a mountain. They could see stars lower down than they could see down from sea level. The second way this manifests is by moving around the earth, you see different stars. If you're in the northern hemisphere, if you're north of the equator, you can see the North Pole. 
And as you move further south, as you get closer to the equator, Polaris, the North Star, gets lower and lower and lower on the horizon, which would simply not happen if you were on a flat Earth. Then once you cross the horizon, or sorry, cross the equator, you don't see the North Star anymore because the curve of the Earth is blocking your view. And you start to see some stars in the Southern Hemisphere that you simply can't from the Northern Hemisphere. So the fact that different positions on Earth give you different perspectives of stars indicates that the Earth is round. There's some other more subtle things like the Coriolis effect. This is what uh, causes twisting motions in, say, hurricanes. Uh, the amount of the strength of the Coriolis force, which we can measure, varies with latitude. So at your, near the North Pole, it's a certain strength with the equator. It's a it's a different strength. And then as you get down to more and more southern latitudes, it looks more and more like the northern hemisphere one, but in the opposite direction. So the fact that the Coriolis force switches directions between the northern and southern hemispheres and changes when strength continuously from the North Pole to the equator to the South Pole you can't replicate this on a flat earth. And we can measure thing of the Coriolis effect with things like the Foucault pendulum, this classic science mu museum educational device where it's just a pendulum swinging freely. As the earth rotates underneath the pendulum, it knocks down different pegs. In order, uh, the rate at which the Foucault pendulum will rotate depends on where you are on the Earth, and the direction that it rotates depends on where you are on the Earth. Uh, there's some other things like the fact that sunset and sun uh, sunrise are at different times across the world. Uh, some flat Earth theories say that the Earth, the sun and moon are spotlights and just shining on different parts. But if there were spotlights, then depending on where you were on the Earth, uh, you would see different shapes. But the fact that they always appear as a disk means that the Earth, it, the more sensible explanation is that the Earth is round and so are the sun and moon. Speaking of which, Every other astronomical object of sufficient size that we observe is round. And why is the Earth any different? Uh, there's, this is not supported by our knowledge of gravity and electromagnetism and the forces of nature. Um, there's, and it doesn't stop there. Oh yeah, and there's all like the pictures uh, and personal testimonies of people and satellites that we sent up into space. <sighs> One of the difficulties with this, uh, with all these lines of evidence, is that they're hard to do in your backyard. Uh, when you look at your backyard, the, the Earth looks flat. It's only when you get to global scales, finely tuned measurements, careful calculations that er the er curvature of the Earth reveals itself. You can't really just go in your backyard and do a quick experiment and determine the curvature of the earth. I mean, you can, but you have to be very sensitive. You have to be very careful about it. And so, yes, there is some degree of trust involved. You have to trust me when I say we've carried out these experiments. You have to trust the maker of the orbiting satellite that took the picture that shows the curved earth that they know how to take pictures. Um, there is trust involved. And so that's why I think the flat earth Thing is more about lack of trust in science than it is about the evidence and facts. But I'll talk about more that more uh, next week. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter, and I'll see you next week.